Hello and welcome to this e-module on Energy and Sustainability. Let's take a look at the learning objectives of this module. By the end of this module, you will be able to Explain Energy and Sustainability Explain the need to improve energy efficiency Describe the role of facility manager List the 8 key target areas Explain the energy efficiency process List the top 10 actions to reduce energy use Describe the initiatives for energy sustainability in facility, premises or process or people List the simple steps to be followed by all in office List the steps towards clean and renewable energy generation Discuss the best practices from facilities managers Explain the impact on business Name the Indian agency's green buildings. Let us begin with the introduction. Energy efficiency simply means to use less energy to provide the same service. This phrase is often used to describe any kind of energy saving measure, though technically it should be distinguished from energy conservation, broader term, which can also include foregoing a service rather than changing the efficiency with which it is provided. Examples of energy conservation include turning down a thermostat in the winter or walking to the shops rather than driving there. Example of energy efficiency is using a compact fluorescent bulb rather than a traditional incandescent bulb as it uses much less electrical energy to produce the same amount of light. Increasing the energy efficiency often costs more money up front, but in many cases, this capital outlay will be paid back in the form of reduced energy costs within a short time period. This makes efficiency improvements an attractive starting point for reducing carbon emissions. Sustainability services are offered by Facility Management FM companies to decrease negative environmental impact and improve social and economic benefits like energy efficiency, reduction in utility bills, improved air quality, etc. Increasingly, not only are corporations finding the importance of sustainability initiatives, but looking into the future are realizing that energy costs are rising. For these reasons, facility managers are primarily focusing on the operations and maintenance aspect of facility management and its correlation with energy sustainability. Improving energy efficiency has the ability to impact operational efficiency as well as reduce energy consumption and overall costs. Now, let's understand what a green building is. Green buildings, also known as sustainable buildings, refer to physical structures that are designed and planned in a way that makes them environmentally responsible and resource efficient. These buildings optimize the use of resources like energy, water and reduce lesser amounts of waste which is managed properly. GRIHA G -R -I -H -A, Green Rating for Integrated Habitat Assessment is one of the few institutions that certify buildings as green. Green buildings are known to reduce energy consumption up to 30 to 40 percent and water consumption up to 50 to 60 percent. Here are a few techniques that make a building green. The image shows the typical layout of a green building. Let's now look at the objectives of energy and sustainability. The objectives for energy and sustainability in buildings is to have the following goals. Increase energy efficiency. Decrease costs. Increase reliability and security. Improve facility management and optimization through data and analytics. Meet carbon footprint and sustainability goals. Turn energy into education.
Next, let us understand why we need to improve energy efficiency. It is sometimes hard to see how we can have an impact and as a facility manager, why should you improve the energy efficiency of the facility? Economic. Energy is not a fixed cost. Being more efficient can help meet cost targets. A number of energy efficiency measures are available which are simple to implement and have a good payback time. Security. Global energy prices are rising as demand outstrips conventional supply. Improving energy efficiency now will give the first mover advantage and pay dividends in the future by ensuring the operational security. Environmental. Saving fossil fuel energy cuts the greenhouse gas emissions associated with business operations, helps demonstrate green credentials to the stakeholders and helps to meet ISO 14001 commitments. Now we will look at the role of a facility manager. The role of facilities manager is very important in making the building greener by cutting the company's in-house carbon dioxide emissions. There are multiple opportunities for managers to lead the drive to cut its operational carbon emissions. The energy used in buildings is a significant source of greenhouse gas emissions worldwide and it is more than that used by either transport or industrial sectors. As the graph illustrates, the energy used for space and water heating, air conditioning, cooling and for lighting a commercial building is significant and it is by focusing on these areas that the largest savings can be made. The role of the facility manager includes the following. Gain commitment from senior management in the company. Find a champion at the senior level to support the change. Identify risks and priorities. Set policies, objectives and targets long and short term in conjunction with stakeholders. Develop a plan to implement the process. Allocate resources to action the plan. Effectively, communicate those details to all internal and external stakeholders. Here are the eight key target areas. Energy and greenhouse management. Water management. Waste management and recycling. Biodiversity. Pollution prevention and environmental risk management. Transport. Community awareness. Environmental management. Let us now understand the energy efficiency process with the help of this diagram. Energy efficiency and carbon management should be thought of as an ongoing process. The diagram shows how to approach this process in a logical way that empowers you to keep striving for continuous improvement. The key to energy efficiency is management. The first maxim of energy management is that you can't manage what you don't measure. Thus, establishing a baseline of energy use should be your top priority as a facilities manager. Get the bills out and check consumption. Keep a record of it. If in doubt, check the meters and consider how operational changes and external factors such as the weather have affected energy consumption. Once a baseline has been established, then tackle the no-cost followed by low-cost measures suggested in this guide. A no-cost measure is one that is free to implement, although it may take an hour or so, and low-cost measures are ones that will pay for themselves within six months. No cost measures are applicable to both leased and owned buildings as they do not involve changing the building services. Medium cost measures. These will pay for themselves in less than two years. It may be that immediate implementation of an action is not appropriate, but when any major change is planned for the building portfolio, the decision making process should be repeated to see if any measures which were not previously possible could be implemented during the refurbishment or relocation. Throughout this process, energy use should be monitored 
and energy savings reported to enhance the business case for future energy efficiency plans. Meter readings or bills should be compared on at least a quarterly basis with data from the previous year to see if unit consumption has fallen. Set up a simple spreadsheet to track monthly consumption and record savings. Next, let us look at the top actions that might help reduce energy use. Several initiatives can be taken in facility premises for energy sustainability. Let's have a look at them. Review and redesign lighting control system to reduce lighting hours. Review and redesign lighting zone to reduce light wastage. Install occupancy sensor to turn off lights in idle rooms. Use T5 or LED energy saving lights. Review MEP design to trim down over provision. Use energy saving chiller plant, water cooled VSD. Lift modernization to improve operations efficiency and energy savings. Use solar energy and renewable energy. Energy audit. Reduce use of hot wear for washing. Low emitting materials LEED, BC plus D and ID plus C. Use motion sensor control for water tap. Use motion sensor control for urinal flushing, water closet flushing. Carbon audit. High performance workplace, share resources and common facilities. Integrate sustainability design into all upcoming HPW projects. For example, recycle bins. PEERS, Peers, Environmental Sustainability Platform that is ESP tools, prediction tools for cost reduction. Incorporate green roof, green wall in office design. Building level water metering, that is LEED, BC plus D and EBOM. Green tenancy with landlords. Carbon disclosure projects. Dow Jones Sustainability Index. Next, let us look at the initiatives that should be taken on the process front of facilities for energy sustainability. Rationalize external signage hours. Rationalize office lighting schedule. Audit LUX level and remove excessive lighting. Install timer to all vending machines. Turn off advertising light of vending machines. Activate energy saving mode of drinking water system. Turn off boiler during off hours. Use smart power bar to trim off standby power. Recommission equipment to maximize efficiency. Shut down number of lifts after rush hours. Lead lag control and rotation for air conditioning systems. Bring up temperature set point and humidifier to improve cooling efficiency. Centrally control room air conditioning temperature to facilitate Proper system automation. Set and fix temperature of refrigerator. Building level energy metering, that is LEED, BC plus D and EBOM. Power analyzer to monitor power efficiency. Smart metering to monitor trend usage. Bulk tariff or maximum demand tariff review and implementation. Demand management, load shedding or shifting. Energy audit to review power performance. Smart print. Adopt use of e-statement and report. Carbon audit to review environmental footprint. Purchase energy star products, for example, refrigerator. Daylight cleaning. Use green cleaning equipment, that is noise, energy, water consumption. Use non-chemical deodorizer and air cleaners instead of fragrance in toilets. 
Use biodegradable pesticide. Use environmental cleaning agent for office cleaning. Use hand washing foam instead of liquid soap to reduce consumption. Use environmental friendly plant based dish washing detergent to reduce pollution. Indoor air quality certification. Replaced bottled water with filtered water. Reduce tap running time. Install aerator to reduce water consumption. Use enfold hand paper towel with at least 40% recycled contents. Organic waste management, aquaponic system. People working in facilities play an important role in energy sustainability too. Let's look at the initiatives that should be taken by them. Turn off computer screen when leaving the desk. Shut down computer before leaving for the day. Turn off lights in rooms and pantries when not in use even during daytime. Use task lights instead of general office lights. Remove personal electrical appliances. Remove mobile phone chargers from power bar. Only turn on TV when watching. Use rechargeable battery instead of disposable battery. Trim down standing order of extended AC supply and lighting hours. Support binless office to segregate waste at source. Do not bring personal bin to work. Comply with secured shred policy and dispose internal documents in shred bins. Duplex printing. Use less paper. Use electronic copy instead of printing hard copies for meetings and other internal communications. Recycle paper that is non-confidential, plastic and cans. Chop no stick. Use stainless steel bag. Refrain from using disposable cutlery. Some simple steps, if followed by all, might help a great deal in sustaining energy. Here are some of them. Close doors to the outside to keep in cooler air. Turn off lights when offices are not in use and turn off all external lights not necessary for security and safety. On hot days, draw the window shades to keep the sun out. Turn off office equipment or keep them in power saving mode while not in use. Check to ensure doors to fridge remain closed. Do not use the street light breakers in the day to draw power for other equipment like pressure washer. Remember, a dirty AC filter makes the unit draw more current. Hence, the AC technician should frequently clean the filters. Do not keep quiet if people waste water. Unnecessary wastage of water means the pump has to unnecessarily work more and wasteful usage of energy takes place. If to use the lift, schedule your journey up and down well so that unnecessary use of lift can be avoided. Now, let's look at the steps to be taken towards clean and renewable energy generation. It only becomes cost-effective to consider renewable sources of energy generation once energy efficiency measures have been installed to reduce demand. Whilst installing a micro wind turbine or solar photovoltaic that is PV panel is a highly visible statement of an organization's commitment to sustainability and minimizing its impact on climate change, it should really be considered as the icing on the cake. That is, something to be considered only once energy efficiency has been tackled. In areas with a warm climate and where demand for cooling is greater than the demand for heating. Cryogeneration or trigen technology may have a role to play in increasing energy efficiency. Trigen is the simultaneous production of mechanical power, often converted to electricity, heat and cooling from a single heat source such as fuel or solar energy. As with cogeneration, the waste heat byproduct that results from power generation is harnessed, thus increasing the overall efficiency of the system.
a facilities manager is in a position to influence many of the procurement choices within the building. Let's look at some best practices that could be adopted. Approach energy in a hierarchical manner and think big. Concentrate on reducing primary energy use. Consider big hitters such as district heating systems and combined heat and power that is CHP if feasible. This itself could reduce the carbon emissions and energy spent by 20%. There are quick techno fixes that pay for themselves rapidly and don't involve major infrastructure changes. For example, is energy efficient office equipment specified as standard? When light bulbs fail, substitute them with low energy bulbs or tubes as they last longer, less maintenance time is spent changing them. Look at reducing the carbon impact of smaller procurement choices that can be influenced. For example, consider specifying recycle paper, introducing a printing reduction policy and selecting local seasonal food for meetings. As a central point of information for the premises, ensure that indirect carbon emissions are reduced by promoting sustainable transport to and from the premises if possible. Next, let us see how energy and sustainability impacts businesses. Steps to help reduce carbon footprint will help the company adhere to environmental norms. It can also be sold for revenue. Energy and sustainability steps reduce the utility bills through efficient operations and removing and including different methods as discussed. India Agencies Green Buildings Lastly, let's look at the various Indian agencies that work towards energy and sustainability. Green Building Code is a medley of codes and standards contained in the state bylaws. The National Building Code NBC The Energy Conservation Building Code ECBC Norms set by ratings programs such as Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design India LEED India India Green Building Council, IGBC, GRIHA, Griha. That brings us to the end of this module on energy and sustainability. In this module, we looked at energy and sustainability, the need to improve energy efficiency, the role of facility manager, eight key target areas the energy efficiency process, the top 10 actions to reduce energy use, initiatives for energy sustainability in facility premises, initiatives for energy sustainability in facility process, initiatives for energy and sustainability in facility people, simple steps to be followed by all in office, steps towards clean and renewable energy generation, best practices from facilities managers, impact on business, Indian agencies, green buildings,